Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel here for CNT Auctioneers and Valuers. Um, today I'm just going to show you a few of Imperial German uh, pickle horbs and Kugel helms that we have coming up in our auction in February. Um, got a good little selection here of helmets, uh, all from one collector. Uh, as you can see, uh, various types and various states. Uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll run through them with you and just show you um, what what makes these nice and what to look for uh, when buying uh, Imperial German pickle horbs here. Uh, most of the ones you can see here are all either uh, enlisted ranks examples or what's known as a one year volunteer um, or sometimes you can class them as NCOs but most of these are uh, standard infantry soldiers that would have worn these in the trenches of World War I. So uh, we'll start along this, probably along this back row which will be simpler. Uh, so the first one we come to here uh, is a very rare example, probably one of the rarest ones we've got sitting here, which is for the state of Mecklenburg. Now this one has the original Mecklenburg enlisted ranks helmet plate here to the front with a big starburst and as you can see has the original uh, Mecklenburg other ranks cockade. Um, when you're looking at buying uh, pickle hawks here from, uh, from World War I from Germany. Uh, always try to make sure you can find ones that have got original cockades and original chin straps. They are the ones that always collectors are looking for and will always hold their value best uh, if you ever want to try and resell them. Uh, a typical fault with helmets from Mecklenburg, uh, because of the uh, arrangement of their spikes, they're, they're quite heavy and on the leather shells, the, the, the weight of the spike base makes them shrink and um, makes them sink into the helmet. So as you can see, there is some sort of cracking along here where the weight of the spike in the base has, has pulled it down. But it's still really nice and quite a rare helmet to find. Um, I'm probably not going to say anything about values for these helmets, um, but if you are interested in seeing the values or want to um, look at them in depth or even one if you want to bid on them. Uh, you can go onto our website, which the details are probably on this video, uh, on our page. Uh, you can go on there and uh, you can have a look at this catalogue and you can see all these helmets with their, their estimate guides. So moving along, again quite an iconic helmet from World War I. This is what's known as one of the felt Erzatz pickle horbs. Uh, obviously these were produced in felt because of the scarcity and the um, cost of producing them in leather. Uh, the Germans came up with a whole uh, raft of things to try and uh, make these pickle horbs cheaper. So they produced them in a, what's known as a pressed felt. So again, this one is a, a standard uh, Prussian soldier from the state of Russia with an enlisted ranks helmet plate, but again, original cockades and original strap. Um, again, this one has a nice lining system and remains of the original regimental stampings. Quite rare to find on felt helmets because the stampings never really stayed on there because of the, the ink, they just wore off over time. So it's quite rare to find uh, imperial felts with remains of stampings. Sadly, not too clear, but again, good original example. Um, many reproductions of the felt helmets were made and a lot of collectors are very, very wary of, of buying felt helmets. Um, very difficult to say to collectors what to look for, uh, but I always like to look for the colour. Most of the reproduction felt ones I've seen have always not quite had the right colour. Um, now, there are different variations of colour, so it's not one to guide you, but just for a, an initial guide for when you're first looking, is uh, you want to be looking for this real like greyish green cloth. Uh, if it's too green or too light, then it could be a reproduction. But um, you just got to be very careful when you're looking for an original felt helmet. But this is a really nice one. Um, and you do see different types with different uh, fittings, some as you see them with the uh, rear spines. Uh, this one hasn't got a rear spine, uh, but like I say, you, you do see all different types and, and different constructions as well. Um, I'm going to go on now further along this back area. Um, this is a particularly fine one as well. This is for a Saxon artillery. Now the artillery helmets are known as Kugelhelms um, because of the ball top as opposed to the spike for the infantry regiments. Um, so this is again a nice pre-World War I example uh, and again nice original Saxon starburst helmet plate and a good tip when buying pickle horbs oh, and you can probably see with nearly all these here you want to look for all the fittings to slightly match occasionally the front plate might be of a slightly different uh, metal produce, production but um, if you try to find ones that all match it normally means they've always been together um, 
uh, a telltale sign of Saxon helmets as well. It's this particular style that they did their cockades, uh, known as the non-serrated type uh, by collectors. And as you can see, if you look at the difference between these, uh, you'll see the serrated and then the Saxon style non-serrated. There was a couple of states that did this, uh, Saxon being one of the most predominant ones. Again, very, very nice example, good condition interior, uh, and nicely regimentally marked here for the, uh, looks like the 19th Field Artillery, uh, and again, nicely um, army group marked as well. Um, and that's always quite a good thing to look for. If you look for helmets which have got army group numbers, because then you want to tie up the army group number to the state of what the helmet is. Uh, again, it's not always a 100% telltale sign, but often uh, if you find, it, especially an early helmet, with army group numbers that don't match the front plate, it could mean that it's been um, uh, mismatched or, or, or put together at some point in its life. Now right at the beginning I said about uh, the enlisted ranks and stuff, and uh, this one is what's known as a one year volunteer. So this was for, uh, again, pre-World War One, and this is for, again, an artillery uh, number, which is for the state of Baden. You see the Baden Griffin here, uh, which is the helmet plate for Baden. Um, and these helmets are very nice because they have all the um, classic features of an enlisted ranks helmet, but normally the quality of an officer's. So again, you've got the scaled chin straps here this time, uh, officer style cockades, and you can see here again, Barden here again with this different, almost like ribbon style cockade. Like we said with the Saxon having the non serrated, the Barden it's quite common to find, especially with their officer's helmets, to have this almost like ribbon style cockade. Uh, this one, again, with a lot of one-year volunteers, they often have what's known as like an enlisted rank style liner. You either find the enlisted ranks or you can find the uh, officer style quality linings. For uh, And this one has the original owner's name in here, which you can clearly see is for one-year volunteer with his name. And he's from uh, Baden uh, Field Artillery Regiment number 66. So, again, really nice example on that one. Uh, being a slightly different being the one year volunteer. Now moving to this one, which uh, to me I think is one of the best helmets we've got amongst this collection. So this is again another artillery, Kugel Helm. And um, in fact I'm going to show you these two together almost because it shows the different types. So here you have its original field trench cover. And typically with artillery helmets, um, you see quite often the covers are a lot larger than the helmets. They almost look like they don't fit. Very common for artillery helmets for some reason. This cover is like a 1915 style because you've got the green numbers here, which is very typical. The early on ones had red numbers, uh, but they, they changed uh, pretty much. They say 1915, but really end of 1914 into 1915, and they changed the green numbers. Uh, this one, again, is for the state of Prussia. Uh, and as you can see, it's a, it's a Model 15 style helmet. So you've got the uh, grey metal fittings, as opposed to the earlier type, which is 805, which is the brass fittings. So that's the difference. This is the wartime issue helmet, and these are pre-war into the early stages of, of World War I. Uh, this particular example, once again, is beautiful. Um, all the original fittings, it's almost like mint condition almost. You can see it's got the original cockades, original strap, original trench cover, and again, really nice inside, all marked here to the Field Artillery Regiment 44, and this one dated 1916. Uh, so obviously literally just before the introduction of the uh, model 1916 steel helmet. Again, I don't want to stress so much, this is a super example. Um, just You just don't find them like this now. Uh, all matching, matching the regimental cover to the helmet, it really is a superb example. If you're looking for one with a real trench cover, to me, you, you can't find much of a better example than that. Um, and then again, this is the early artillery pickle hall, again for Prussia, but again, as you can see, uh, just with the brass mounts, but again, very nice interior, um, possibly the remains of some ink stampings. Uh, again, normally all the regimental stampings will normally always be on these back peaks, so it's a good thing to look for for collectors. Um, occasionally you find markings inside the shell, um, but often, like I say, they are on this rear peak, so it's always good to have a good look there. So like we uh, spoke earlier about the Felt Erzatz pickle hall there for Prussia, 
Uh, this is another form of AirZax helmet, and this is one of the metal helmets. Um, this one is for the state of Württemberg. Uh, so you can see again the Württemberg uh, helmet plate to the front. And a good tip for collectors, the Württemberg helmets always seem to damage. These antlers are very, very um, easy to break off. So when you're looking for a Württemberg helmet, try to look for one that's totally complete with the, uh, the, the helmet plate. Because um, like I said, these are often you find damaged. So uh, you want to try and find the best example you can, and you need to try and find one with a complete um, helmet plate. Um, this one is probably the most worn example we have in amongst this collection. Um, as you can see, there is some sort of rusting and spots to the, to the metal tin shell. But again, nice original Württemberg uh, cockade there. Original strap, it has got a, a later repair to the strap just to give it a bit more strength on there. Um, and, and the lining is pretty, um, is pretty well worn. Uh, sometimes you find uh, these were made by the famous German toy manufacturer, Bing. Um, you often find that with the Bavarian helmets, they have the Bing manufacturer's uh, mark on them. I can't see one in this one, but again, it's a, it's a really nice, good Airsatz metal helmet. Uh, and for a, a rare state to find as well, Württemberg is not the easiest to find. Moving on here, uh, this again, like we had the artillery one year volunteer, this is for a, uh, an enlisted ranks for the state of Baden. And again, like I said earlier, see how all the fittings all match in condition. You can see they've always been together on this helmet. So again, like I say, original cockade, original strap, Baden State cockade there, uh, nice fittings. And again, I believe it's all uh, beautifully regimentally marked here to uh, looks like Infantry Regiment 113, looks like. Uh, and interestingly, dated 19, uh, probably 1910. It looks a little like a six, but it's probably 1910, being, like I said, pre-war 1895 brass mounts helmet. But again, nice original liner in there. Uh, just care for that strap a little bit. Um, but again, a little bit of crazing on this one, which again, is something you do often find sometimes see uh, on the shelves, a little bit of crazing to the leather, but a uh, good, honest, original example. Now, again, we go to another example here with the original trench cover. So this one, again, listed rate. So we lift this up. And uh, this is for, again, state of Württemberg. So it's a Model 15 with the grey metal fittings with an original Model 15 cover. Now, there were some certain amendments they made to the covers. This is probably what you'd call an early cover, which is, which is uh, with the green numbers. This one doesn't have numbers. And the later Model 15 spike, uh, helmet covers, they had a detachable spike fitting. Now, often you find that they, the spike fittings uh, have come detached from the covers. It's very common to find uh, just a main body cover and not the spike top cover uh, and this is the sample with this one that's possibly because of the m15 helmet which could unscrew the uh, spike top and come off so that's the reason another feature of the m15 cover is the side flaps for the fitting of the chin strap and the chin strap will come around here mainly to secure the cover this example it hasn't been put like that but that's normally the, the situation um, again as we lift the cover up here again you can see the uh, Württemberg plate here in grey metal, uh, cockades, and again Württemberg cockade on there. Uh, again, nicely inside, a little bit of wear, there's some remains of some markings on here, including a, a stamping for the uh, manufacturer. Uh, but again, it's a pretty good example of an untouched original M15 pickle hall here, and like I said, with the original trench cover. Okay. So as we move around here, we come to the centre of the uh, bottom row, and this is a particularly rare example. Now, you might think it's just a standard Prussian enlisted ranks, but this actually is a helmet for infantry regiment number 87. These were from the regiments from Nassau. Now, these helmets have a Prussian plate, but the uh, plate is slightly different, and it has the additional scroll of La Belle Alliance. Okay, this was like a battle honour for the regiments from Nassau. Uh, again, real super sleepy untouched example, which has never been cleaned, has all the original cockades and original strap, um, and uh, the plate, as you can see, all fits in there lovely, and all the dust behind it, 100 plus years of dust. Um, the inside, the lining, unfortunately, is a little bit worn, it is a little bit damaged, um, but it is the original one to the helmet. Um, the helmet has original inventory markings on here, stamped and dated 1911. Um, Whenever you're looking for one of the helmets from a regiment like this, or one of the rarer regiments, or a slight 
differences to a standard Prussian regimen, always look for ones that have got regimental stampings. They always what collectors want to see. So if you've got a regimental stamping that matches the plate, uh, it's always going to be a much better say, investment piece than if you have one which is just a, uh, say, a Prussian Lebel Lights plate on a, on a standard helmet. So a real good tip, always look for regimental markings, when, especially when you're getting up to those expensive helmets. Similar example is the one next door to it. Uh, this is, again, this is for one of the regiments from the Hanseatic areas. So you can see it's got the different cockade, which is the Hanseatic cockade here. Uh, this is for uh, one of the regiments from Hamburg. Okay, so you've got, um, again, nice leather shell. Uh, I believe it is all regimentally marked to that regiment. Again, if you go onto our website, you'll see a lot more details about this. Um, but similar to this one, real sleepy, untouched feel. Um, all the hundred years of dust all behind the helmet. Um, me personally, I always like to think best to leave helmets as they are. Um, I don't like to see them really cleaned up and polished up. Uh, to me, I like to see them like they've come out of the trenches, but that's just my personal view. Um, if you are going to try and clean them up, um, what I would just say is just be very, very careful um, what you use, because you don't want to devalue them uh, or damage them in any way. So moving on to this example. Um, this is one that, again, some collectors might not have seen before. This is for one of the helmets from one of the Saxon Duchy regiments. Okay, so the Principality regiments. This is uh, for infantry regiment number 95. So you've got a Prussian helmet plate and you have the Saxon uh, starburst here to the centre and the different scroll above the eagle's chest, which is first, as opposed to Koenig, which you see on the standard Prussian helmet plates. Again, if you're looking for one from one of these Saxon duchies, it's a real good tip, always make sure you look for one that has got the correct back plate and it, so it hasn't been married together at some point in its life. Um, like I said with all these, always again, nice original cockade, uh, and this one is a very rare cockade for this regiment. There's some very good reference books out there, they are quite expensive, but I would advise all collectors, if you can, try and buy some of these reference books because they will give you the regimental details and it will give you the little features that you need to see on various regiments. Um, what we maybe try and do is uh, give a little list of books that we do think are relevant to people if they are looking to build a collection of pickle hauls um, because it will always help you in the, in the future. So, uh, yeah, again, really nice one. This one has got a little bit of battle damage actually, uh, which we can see on the side. Let's quickly line is quite dry and this one so to be a bit careful with that uh, but as you can see here is a bit of battle damage missing one cockade okay which is is not really the end of the world because uh, you do find lots of pictures of um, British soldiers and allied soldiers with captured helmets that are missing chin straps or cockades um, but if you can get ones with full cockades and some straps you are always better um, like I said the line is a little bit dry in this one but again, it is all regimentally marked to this regiment, which is a really important feature uh, for these. Um, but again, nice, sleepy, untouched. Um, how I personally think you want to find them. But uh, like I said, that's just my personal preference on that. So. Then we go to um, the very classic, what I'd like to call this one, extremely classic uh, Prussian Model 95 enlisted ranks helmet. Perfect, typical one that would have been worn right at the beginning of World War I as the Germans were marching through to uh, Bel through Belgium and France. Um, real, real classic, original straps, original cockades, and just very, very sleepy. Um, nice original lining inside. Again, a little bit of wear, but you'd want to expect to see that. Uh, and I think there are some regimental stampings on the, on the rear peak. Again, more details of those regimental stampings you can find on our website. Now the final one I'm going to show you in this little collection is this one. Now, as you can see with this one, Prussian helmet plate, Prussian, all my Prussian mounts, but this one with the scale chin straps. Why is that? This one is for one of the train battalion regiments. So train battalion regiments had the scale chin straps pre-war. Later one in the war, they moved to the leather chin strap like all the other units. But the pre-war ones always had nice, um, scaled, dome scaled chin straps. Uh, this one, good Prussian other ranks helmet plate, original Prussian other ranks cockades, uh, and then inside again, nice lining inside, and you can see here, marked to the train battalion number eight, and dated 1904. So again, really, really nice example. 
So, like I said, it's hopefully a little short video of these ones we've got coming up. And hopefully you've seen a little, few little tips on what to do with collecting pickle hogs. Um, all really nice, good examples, all available in our auction on the uh, 8th and 9th of February. These ones are all coming up on the 9th of February. So if you go onto the website, have a look, you can see them all in more detail. There's a lot more pictures of them all, uh, and they've got all the estimate prices, etc. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please press the subscribe button or the like button as well. And um, we hope to bring you more videos about uh, military and other items we have coming up at CNT Auctioneers soon. Thank you for watching.